Good morning, Giants. Welcome to Wake Up with Giants TV. Have you ever wondered why emotions are important? People at home are like, good Lord, Janice. <laughs> Get up already. <laughs> good morning, Giants. Welcome to Wake Up With Giants TV. I'm Ryan Morris. And as always, I'm here with your host, Nicholas T. Smith. I don't know where the voices came from this morning. but They're, they're here. They're here. <laughs> if you haven't subscribed on YouTube, go ahead and do that because you can hit the alert button. You can hit the subscribe. You can know when we come live every single time because... YouTube's cool like that. Mm. Um, this doesn't count. If anybody's wondering if this counts, that I'm on Facebook because I'm not. <laughs> technically, <laughs> technically, no, I am not on Facebook. Should we stream in? So, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and uh, what else? If you're on, if you are on Facebook, if you're watching on Facebook, welcome first of all, and then uh, come join us on. A tribe of giants we have a facebook group you can also find us on wake up with giants tv and uh because we stream into there too and <clears throat> new thing in the uh description on facebook up in the top corner probably this side there's a download <laughs> for the book, side the You're art of us. accomplishment and so the entire ebook and so you just go in plug your email in and you'll get the entire ebook instantly uh, sent to your email, so not quite instantly, but it's good. <laughs> so we're gonna. We're it gonna happens. Go it's coming eventually. It's coming. Yeah. So we're gonna talk about emotions in this video. You're gonna want to watch till the end because what our goal is is to to understand the importance of emotions in your life and why we have them. Because man, if I asked you this question, how many of you would like to live a life without emotions? <laughs> <laughs> right? some days so it might feel that way some days oh man it sure does crappy boring life i'm gonna pull up a, a portrait here this is beautiful that, human is that guy winking he's winking <laughs> he wishes he was winking this is a guy named phineas gage and that steel bar that you see in his hand hmm. went through his head oh, oh. he was out uh, <laughs> preparing for a mine like tamping dynamite with that bar and the dynamite exploded and shot the the steel beam through his cheek up through his brain and took out a portion of his frontal lobe and so he lost his emotional part of his body where he couldn't he didn't have emotions and so he was like this disheveled worker he you know he'd get in fights he would gamble all his money away uh, couldn't hold relationships had zero emotion around things absolutely no fear anymore just gone that, that gone could be gone. nice actually yeah well <laughs> the problem is his life became a just complete mess oh. and so he had to learn over life to re rewire that we call that plasticity but eventually he owned a stagecoach company and and actually integrated with society as much as he could but he had to relearn to do things from a social perspective without the emotions and so they're, they're guides for us. The emotions tell us what to act on. They get us moving. If you look at the etymology of the word uh, emotion, it means out and to push out. So the first part, the E is from X, meaning out, so outward, and then motion. You need to get it, get it out of you and pushed away. And so it's that thing that gets us in motion. Lisa Steve Ferguson probably, says that happens to some of us without an accident, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Throw emotions. You're like, what's wrong with that guy? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I can do that without without a steel bar. <laughs> so, Lisa Feldman Barrett, she's one of my favorites. She says that emotions are not reactions to the world; they are your constructions of the world. I wish she would have used the word creations here because mm -hmm. reactions. And creations are the same letters, just in a different order. That's and so we think of emotions as our reactions to the world. 
And in a lot of cases, we'll feel the affect of somebody else, which is affect is the emotional discharge from somebody else. Mm -hmm. That'll hit us. And then we'll think it's our own and we'll start responding as though those emotions are our emotions. And then we start to create our world from our past experiences. They call it the remembered present. So we take all our memories and we start predicting from there. And then that triggers our emotions. All of our emotions are created within us. And so they tell us what to act on or not act on. So when you set a goal or a dream or a vision, and then you feel, I often feel this like discharge. Like I talked about the, uh, the spaceship on Star Wars where the, the warp drive just goes, won't, 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 <laughs> right? <laughs> Something inside of me when that comes up says, you know, we had this past experience that said this happened. And so when we look at that future and we start to predict from there and that emotion comes in, it says, don't act on that because this is going to happen. And it's almost at an unconscious level where you don't have a say in it. It feels like that because it's happening so quickly, but your brain is going in, pulling in all the memory stores and then shooting out emotions to tell you to act or not act. And so emotions are really important because they get you into motion around what you're creating in your life. What do you think around that? How do how do uh, the like thoughts? Because I, I heard what do you have something like 50,000 some odd thoughts a day? Yeah. How yep. do thoughts play a factor into that as well? So thoughts are possibilities. Right. If you were, if you were to look at these are just possibilities, 50,000 to 70,000 possibilities a day. Your brain's just cycling through. It's flooding through kind of runs in like a like a track, a racetrack, you know, it's just going through the brain and just bringing stuff up. Mm -hmm. All possibilities. Your beliefs tell you what to act on. And so when you're looking at these possibilities, your beliefs tell you which ones are important out of all of those possibilities. So you start grabbing the ones that are important to you, depending on the situation. So when you have a situation come up. Your brain's already flooding through those thoughts. Your beliefs say, grab these for this situation. And then sometimes it's doing it so automatically that it's acting on those before you even have a say. And so it's predicting and choosing what you're going to predict and choose. And then it's like my that, predictive text on my phone that yeah, says yeah, duck a lot. Duck, duck. <laughs> <laughs> duck, duck, goose. <laughs> Man, mine says the real word. That's crazy. <laughs> it just thinks I like <laughs> ducks. <laughs> why? Why does this guy like ducks? I well, don't. So what I'm hearing, <laughs> what I'm hearing in that is, is too like, so as, as you're more aware, because you're going to have the thoughts, the yeah. fifty to seventy thousand of them come through. As you're more aware of the emotions. Because it's probably easier to be aware of the thoughts and the like. The, the emotions can trigger. You can't miss the emotions. Yeah, they're it's there. The, you you feel good or you don't, right? Yeah. So it's probably easier as something comes up to catch the emotion and go, okay, what is that? Yeah. Um. You know, but the thoughts like good, good in, good out, bad in, bad out. I don't know. You know, like yeah. it's important to surround yourself with good things and good people and good information but, but some of my best creations have come out of depression mm -hmm. some of my best choices have come out of anxieties and so they can serve you <clears throat> um, but knowing where they are there's a method called storm so when you have a an emotion come up storm is the acronym it says stop and breathe because you can use your body to calm down because you're going to go into that fight or flight state. I'm talking negative emotions. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling happy and you're storming it, you're like, don't, don't don't do that. I'm feeling yeah. happy. Yeah. I need to stop this. <laughs> well, you could use this too. It would work actually. <laughs> like, I don't want to feel too much of I'm that. I'm so done with happy. <laughs> so storm is, is the, uh, the acronym. Let me just put this up here. Stop and so, breathe. Stop and breathe. And then tune in. T is tune in. O is to observe the thoughts behind that emotion. What thoughts are you having? Hmm. And then R is to reframe them and to, to move them around. Like a lot of times we go to the negative. So to reframe it would be to give it another option, another possibility, because we think our stories are so true that when we, we tell them those emotions are hitting so hard that it's, that it's true for us. To reframe it can shift it and move it in another direction. And M is to move toward empathy around it, to not judge yourself harshly, to not be, don't be a dick to yourself, basically, right? 
have yeah. some compassion. Have, have the grace, right? Yeah, some grace to to have this come up for you while you're practicing it. Hmm. But but shifting those emotions in a direction that serves you is going to be a practice until it's not, because eventually it's going to share. It's going to it's going to go in the direction you train it. And a lot of this is we simply haven't had the training around our emotions to move them in the direction we want. Um, so if you look at this, your, your emotion is your brain's creation of what your bodily sensations mean in relation to what's going on around you in the world. So when you're when you're looking at your world and you're interacting with it, your your brain goes into let's find information that supports this experience because we've never been here before but we've had similar experiences in the past. So we're going to pull those in to the remembered present, mm -hmm. make predictions from there, have emotions from there and act or not act from there based on our experiences. The challenge is, is that those past experiences could keep us from getting into action around things that could really serve us. And so the more you can stop it and say, look, stop, just stop, just breathe, tune into it. What am I thinking? Observe it reframe it and then move toward empathy and re-engage in a new direction now. And, mm -hmm. and that'll be a practice. So like Phineas Gage, this guy is missing half of his brain or part of his brain, right? Going back to this. Nope. He's not winking at you. <laughs> he's, uh, he's literally got part of his brain missing because that thing went right through his cheekbone in through his brain, that whole bar that he's holding in his hand. Um, he learned to deal with, the, the affect of the world and respond to the world. We can do that. Even if you had half of a brain, literally, your brain could reroute and rewire in such a way that you could still function in this world. And so don't be saying, I can't do it. I don't have the brain for it. I'm not wired for that. These are Those are lies because you'll have emotions that support those lies that you're telling. Hmm. Well, let me change that. Those, those are truths for you. And you'll have emotions that support your truths. So does that make sense? Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, uh, it makes complete sense. I'm actually grateful that Storm came up today because unknowingly um, participated in that yesterday. Like I, I had all these emotions. I had this stuff coming up and uh, went for a walk mm. and just stopped, breathed, and then tuned in, observed it, reframed it, and then moved towards empathy um, it was useful. Yeah. Um, I also put on, you know, I was like, all right, I, I you know, I, I know I need to like the, the, the stuff that was coming in. I was like, Ooh, this is heavy. So I, as I was walking, I, you know, and you can do whatever serves you, but, um, I threw on an audio book as I was walking and, and, uh, you know, in the audio book, it was, it was talking about, um, being conscious and aware of what's coming in. And, uh, you know, as you, you know, you might not catch everything, but small steps over time create giant results. They do, yeah. And so, you know, and, and that changes that, uh, you know, you talk about neuroplasticity. Plasticity. Plasticity. Yeah. <laughs> Pla that. Plastic. Neuro, neuro stuff. All this plastic <laughs> garbage. Plastic. <laughs> and, uh, but building those pathways as you strengthen yeah. them, um, you know, yeah, I was going to go into more science stuff. It's not going to work here. <laughs> you strengthen that myelin sheath and then, and then things fire faster. They there do. you go. Yeah, there you go. And so as you're, as you're doing it repetitively and catching um, yourself and seeing, Oh, that came up, reframe, redirect, you know, be aware it becomes easier and easier to do. Yeah. And I think a lot of people want to avoid their emotions. They want to numb out their emotions. They don't want to experience the difficult ones. Right. I hardly hear of somebody saying, I got it. I'm feeling so happy. <laughs> right. I'm going to go get drunk. I can't handle this. Right. <laughs> Nobody says that. They're like, oh, I'm too fucking happy. I'm going to go get drunk. They, with the difficult emotions like depression or anxiety with these, there's an opportunity within those for a different pathway. And it's not about transforming it or transmuting it from depression to happiness. Sometimes depression is there to teach you something and to show you a new way because it gets you to pull your energy back on something that you're working on that's not working. Hmm. 
-hmm. and then it gets you to reflect on it. And that's part of that storm process. And then it gets you to have reverence for it. That's part of the M process, which is to have empathy for it, to have reverence for it. And then to re-engage. That's what depression does. Is it has, has you re-engage in a new pathway. And that's where some of my best creations have come out of depression because I start looking for pathways out of that. And often I'll create a poem, a story, a, a connection with another human. You know, I have more empathy for others because of depression. But it's not somewhere I want to stay necessarily, but I know the usefulness of it. Anxiety, same thing. It's, it's something that has us predicting the future, but we're the ones with the final say. You know, going back to this, this quote here, emotions are not reactions to the world. They are your constructions of the world. And this is based on her research, Lisa Feldman Barrett. And she's done a lot of research around it, is that her emotions are not reactions. They're not. You're creating every single one of them based on your past experiences. Wow. And so why not Why not use them for your benefit? That's yeah. going to take that storm method. Slow down with it. Stop with it. Tune into it. Observe it. Reframe it. And then have some empathy and re-engage. You got to re-engage with your life. Remember to do that. So I also just heard in that too, like the, the, if you want to create something different, you can start adding different thoughts and beliefs. Yeah. And you yeah. can create your own world. It might take a minute for those things to show up. Right. You but know, or it might come in very quickly. With time, it's going to compound. You're going to have a complete, complex, beautiful creation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Feel it. Love it. Any other thoughts? Ah, just go make it a giant day. I'm glad you watched to the end. Yeah, perfect. You did that. Now we're going to pop up another video here. Make sure you click on that because it's going to take you even further down the rabbit hole. That'll pop up at the end here on YouTube. So make sure you're subscribed on YouTube. Otherwise, you're not going to see that. Yeah, go check it out if you're not on YouTube. All right, guys. Make it a giant day. We will see you in the next video. Love you too.